Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations, and in this video, I want to share an experiment with you guys that I am working on for making a Christmas bauble ornament, or really, it could be any season. I just, I'm really into Christmas right now because I'm in denial about how sad I am that it's not Halloween anymore, but anyways, um, so I'm actually starting out with some of these Celtic knot, like triquetra, it's a three-pointed Celtic knot. Um, probably pronouncing everything wrong by the way, but the charms come flat and this could be done with charms in a variety of different styles if you want them curved, but I am using my nylon jaw bracelet pliers here by I think, yep, the beadsmith and I'm going to start by just holding the charm here like this and slowly bending it. Now I go from kind of back to tip first because as we bend this way now, it might take some of the curve out and the bend this away is more important to me right now. So again, just being nice and smooth with it. If you go too quickly, um, like in a bit of a rush, you may crack your charm. But you can see here how they're sitting. I don't actually know if you're gonna be able to see, but just that kind of, you can even tell a little bit by the way the light's hitting it. This one's very flat. This one has a slight curve in it. And that's um, from the side. So again, that very, very slight curve. And I think I'm going to do four of these. Well, and there I did the horizontal before I did the vertical. But, and I'm kind of going in thirds. Smush, smush, smush. <laughs> trying to get it nice and curved. I've tried using these guys in a dapping block before, um, and I'm gonna say you kind of have to be careful with it, because you can get a whole lot more shaping. Like, if you don't have a dapping block, we can make this work with just this right here. But let me rummage up my dapping block to kind of demonstrate what can happen. So this is a metal dapping block, and I'm going to use an extra charm just in case I don't want to booger up one that I had already done. Um, I'm going to start by doing my initial forming with my bracelet pliers. Now the thing is, is that if these were just silver or copper, we could totally anneal it with a torch in between um, shaping, and that would soften it up and make it a lot more receptive to being... Um, it crammed into the dapping block but it's an an alloy like an enameled alloy mystery metal type thing from the internet so I don't know what's in here um and I'm gonna kind of I know I should be doing it with the hammer but I'm just gonna hit it with my hand a little at first just to try to get a little bit of a spread and you can see we have some cracking here. So I'm still working on how to avoid that, but I don't want to compromise the integrity of the piece. But if we come in and just start wailing on it with a hammer, it's definitely going to crack. But sometimes we can, at least with the mandrel pli or the bracelet pliers, encourage the charm to come around. But here you can see that actually sits really nice on the bobble um much more flush than what we just did with the pliers but i i usually have a pretty high casualty rate with stuff like this so if you're making it for yourself and you don't mind a little bit of a crack right there let's actually try on another piece that hasn't been shaped first Loud noises. Yeah. You can see we've got cracking, we've got... Here I'm just wailing on it. So yeah, we've got... I mean, it's not broken, except for right there where it is. Um, <laughs> but... <sighs> ultra sad. I'd love to... Ooh, to make some of these out of like copper and solder them together. I mean, that's starting to get into a lot of work just for a Christmas tree ornament, but, um, 
if y'all have any advice on this, I would love to hear it because I would love to be, oh, that's a little too round anyhow. Um, I would love to be able to, you know, have these guys be a little bit more curved. Because I also think this would be a really cool sort of cage. Oh my goodness. What the heck? Did we just come up with a design, y'all? What? Okay, so if we're able to curve them just a little bit more and then put like a little tumbled stone or like a little cabochon or something that I've got to have something. I mean, surely I've got like this whole, my oh, well, I did just do it. <laughs> okay, so our last auction, I got a little carried away giving out freebies in our super mega crap boxes. So now like the past couple times I've been crafting, I'm rummaging through and I'm like, where'd that thing go? And I'm like, oh yeah, I gave it away. <laughs> Okay, but pretend with me like this is a better size for it. But just making a little cage pendant that has a cab. That's way too big, but I don't know. Oh, that's, that'll be for a different... That's for future Vaughn, but I really like that idea so far. Okay, so dapping block, not necessarily appropriate for what we're doing, but it is an option potentially, especially if you're using sterling silver or copper ones that could be maybe resoldered if they resoldered if they cracked or um, it, it kneeled and made much more soft. But if I torched these, I have no idea what would happen. I'm pretty sure I'd like die or something. I don't know. So next step, like, and what I mean by that is I don't know what fumes, I don't know what's in the, I just, I'm not messing with it. <laughs> so if anybody has any advice on that, I'd be super interested. So let's see. I want to see if I can join these at their corners to get them to kind of drape around. And what if, what if we came in with these big old mandrel pliers? Nope. And broke the things off. Yeah. That's probably what would happen. Um, so we'll try again. There we go. Just curving that around. And even if I had mandrel, like brace, I keep bracelet pliers. That's what they're called. Even if I had bracelet pliers that were just slightly more curved than this, that'd be really cool. But that's all right. So I think I'm going to use, and I'm using the same chainmail kit that. I enjoy so much. This is AmericanChainmail.com. I actually get this off of Amazon and I have a link down in the video description below if you're interested. But it's their bright aluminum sampler and it is fantastic. Like I cannot recommend it enough even if you don't really weave chainmail because it's just great for like having a nice selection of jump rings that you don't have to worry about them being a mystery metal. <laughs> So, and here I am using 18 gauge, 3 sixteenths, that's a standard wire gauge. Um, so an American wire gauge, these are 18 gauge, but, or 16 gauge rather. I'm already confused. It's standard wire gauge, 18 gauge, 3 sixteenths inch, and that's the internal diameter. But you could use whatever rings you have on hand. And... I personally absolutely love mixed metal tones because not a thing in this world that I own matches. And so by like this one, this ornament that we're doing is in kind of a antique brass tone. And so by coming in and adding in some silver, I think this will help tie it into the rest of my Christmas tree. So if it's not your cup of tea, that is okay. It wasn't brewed for you, but the techniques remain the same regardless of what color of jump rings you're using. So um, I highly encourage y'all to make it your own. You know, if you have a particular, if you have an idea and you want to see it implemented, go forth and make the thing. So here we have our Celtic knots just draped over the ornament but there's still like space there that is just kind of floppy like it's letting it come from one side to the other and so I'm wondering if there's a way that we can do this with just the three ornaments or not ornaments um just three of the charms 
And so I'm going to, there we go. Sometimes on these soft cut rings, it's really hard to find the opening again. And this is an experimental project with you guys. I didn't like prototype it or anything like that because I wanted to share the design process with y'all. Because I feel like sometimes, you know, we can know the techniques. We can know the chainmail weaves. We can know the wire wrapping pattern. But sometimes it it's getting, you know, th through maybe and just figuring out how in the heck we want to make the thing that we want to make. So now I'm coming through and I'm just going to be putting one of our rings on each end that doesn't have a loop already so that it looks like that. And I'm going to do that to all three. And then hooking through. Oh, this would be super cute with like some beads and stuff. We'll see what we can what we can scrounge up. Okay, so now that we have all three, we can come through with, again, just the same ring size and join those ends together. And if this ring size turns out to be too loose, we can replace it with a smaller ring size, joining the ends together. And we want to maintain that all of our charms are facing, like, oriented in the same way. Oops, warped a ring, that's okay. And so if that's the case, if you're having trouble with it, it can be really helpful to just set it on the table. And then turn and be like, okay, we're doing it like this. <laughs> hooking through that way. And then hooking through that way. And closing. So now let's try the fit of that. Oh my gosh, it's even bigger. <laughs> what did we do? <laughs> so I'm going to try this again in a different ring size, but I will be doing that off camera so that I can get it worked out without, you know, taking up your time. Okay, so exploring alternatives. We could also use a metal ring that is the size that we would like. And then attach our knot work from this center point to that ring and then put other things maybe in between it. I've grabbed some other sort of like charms and different things that I had laying about. Um, but I did end up using 18 gauge 1 fourth inch aluminum rings to join our three knots together and while I think this is interesting I'm also very interested in trying out this method because I'd like for it to lay a little closer and more relaxed to the um to the bobble and I think doing a ring like that first would be a good thing this was from Michael's in one of their like assorted ring packs I'll try to find something as close to as I can um, but it's just a little, like, welded ring. Um, okay. Well, the good news is, because y'all, I went through some rings trying to find something that fits on this. Um, you can kind of see, like, just the <sighs> spent rings. Well, not spent, because, I mean, these rings are good enough quality that, like, you can get, I mean, these are perfectly usable, even though I've opened and closed them, like, 20 times. Um, <laughs> But every ring has its threshold of how many times it will tolerate being opened and closed. But here we go with... Let's go ahead and we've already tested the ring on there. We don't have a ton of space, but we can join these three. And I want there to be enough room that things can like wiggle. So I'm going to keep using, what size is this? Our 18 gauge 530 seconds. And I will be doubling up on the rings on this one. Hopefully it won't take up too much space. 
one. And good news is some of them are already open. Two. And that way it just looks nice, I think, whenever it hangs. And we want to make sure that the way that we're attaching our charms, they'll all be oriented the same whenever it's laying on the bobble, or on the ornament rather. So I'm just coming in and whoop, closing that one. But I'm like super into uh, making ornament covers here lately, even though it's like getting... It is not prime ornament time to be making ornaments. Um, kind of missed my window for this year. But this is a wonderful thing, I think, if you have, like, a crafty family or would like to have a crafty family. And it just might be something fun to do hanging out on New Year's even or just any time that the family's together, make some ornaments together. And that way, you know, next year when you're decorating the tree, you can think of each other, hopefully fondly. <laughs> not, you know, from throwing flyers at each other or something. So, yeah, I like that a lot better. The way it's sitting much more relaxed. And, but I think we'll be able to... Y'all... Okay. I'm actually going to make a Mobius flower for joining each of these shoulders together. And I think I'm going to do it with the 16 gauge 5 16 inch rings. So we will need three rings for each Mobius flower. And for each of these, we will open two and close one. This may actually be a really great utilization, like way to utilize the 18 gauge. 5 sixteenths as well actually I think that's the size I'm going to use because it's a little bit thinner and it's not structural so I can use these rings but it just won't be poking out so far and it will allow us to use a smaller ring for joining the Mobius flower to the charms because we won't have as quite as much um, bulk of the rings to accommodate. So, looks like I'll need two more rings. So I'm just opening it, closing one of them. But yeah, there's not a whole lot of weaves that I use in 18 gauge 3 16 inch ring in so it's a nice to have an opportunity to use them up and decorative stuff like this I think is just perfect for something that's such a large um, not flimsy but it's just maybe slightly more delicate there we go so there's one little Mobius flower so we've put a closed on an opened ring and then closing our opened ring and then we'll take our third open and hook it through both and then close it. These are just wonderful little accent pieces, I think, like little rosettes. Sometimes you got to poke it a bit to make it lay the way that you want, but that's all right. There we go. That's our third one. Very cool. So I am going to go ahead and use our 18 gauge 3 16 for joining. Whoopsie. Yeah, we can go ahead and just take that off the ornament for now. But using, hmm, we could do two. Let's start with one just to make sure it fits. <laughs> we can always go through and add in some more rings later if we decide we like it, but it, this is such an experimental stage that, um, and I'm just hooking through the corner of our charm and then putting our Mobius flower on there and closing it. The good news is with chainmail, 
It can seem complicated, but it's really just a bunch of opening and closing rings. I'm not denying that it gets complicated, but at its core, don't forget, we are just opening and closing rings. So coming around to the third corner. And then we've got one more. So let's go ahead and join that together. So there is this so far. Let's test fit it onto our bubble. Oh, and that's cute. I like that. Now we could, if we wanted, actually join these Merbiers. Oh my god, Merbius. Uh, we could join these Mobius flowers to the center ring, but I think I like them free. Because we may hang some stuff off of them. Whoopsie. Or, let's actually set that off to the side. Let's use our gemstone sphere for a little bit. Just so we can set stuff on there. <laughs> okay, so now I have over here a broken chain. The chain itself is fine. The clasp is busted. So I am going to remove the clasp, but I just uh, wanted to use the chain. I thought it'd be super cute to do like little chain drapes. Just like three layers of chain drapes, I think. Um, and I'm going to use the links from the extender chain to join things together. Because they are a little bit of a curb chain. So it's um, well, not a curb chain, but the links are oval shaped. So, yeah. Okay, we'll start by establishing how long we want our chain to be. We touched on this in a different tutorial, but in case you haven't watched that one, we'll be going over it again here. And again, a styrofoam ball, ball would be perfect for testing this on because you could actually use a pin and pin your chain. Okay, it's looking like an inch. Let me get a ruler up here. I don't have a ruler, I just have this cutting mat, so. <laughs> I think we're gonna be looking at like an inch, an inch and a quarter. Let's do an inch and a quarter to start with. And I'm just gonna clean in here and hold that loop with my pliers with my wire snips rather and snip it line up with where our next link is going to be to snip make sure i'm just holding on to that one chain drop the first one we snipped line up for the next one Mark it with my thumbnail, snip, and then grab right here, and snip. So there's our three lengths of chain at an inch and a quarter. And let's get those attached before, um, like attached and tested before we do the next layer. So I'm going to be opening and removing the links off of the bit of extender chain, which all of this chain that I'm using, I had, in this tutorial at least, <clears throat> I had gotten from the Ring Lord. The large chain is their 19 gauge enameled iron, and the small cha chain is their, uh, mm, I don't know, another one. <laughs> like, it's thinner though. <laughs> I know that that is like super helpful, but eh, I don't have their website in front of me right now. 
So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and here's six. So we have enough links prepared. And now we'll come in and hook through the last link. So let me zoom in for you guys. And then we're going to come in right here. Looks like I could do to open my link a little bit, but it fit. And close. And now, oh, caught it with my shirt. And nice. <laughs> so yeah, this one's nice and open. I'm gonna hook through the very tip of our chain. Magnetism is getting a little annoying but that's okay, we'll figure it out. There we go. And then hooking through right here and close. Ooh, that's pretty, I like that. Okay, so we'll come around, do that same thing to the next side. Again, making, our, making sure our link is nice and open. Hooking through the end of our chain hooking through our charm but yeah really any charm that has oopsie whoopsie daisy <laughs> there we go any charm that has closed loops could be used for this So you could do all different sorts of themes. They don't have to be holiday. I mean, really, I don't even feel like this one is particularly holiday themed, except for that it's going on a Christmas tree ornament and then getting hung on a Christmas tree. But if I were hanging it on just any old glass bauble, uh, it would just look cute, I think. Okay, I'm going to hook in and loop in. It's very repetitive. Once you've done it on one section, whoops, sometimes that happens. Just your pliers slip. Hooking through the very end, hooking around the charm, and close. So there we have our first layer of the chain drapes, which I think are just so much fun. There we go. You know, it's occurred to me, we could have also probably, oh my goodness, that'd have been so cute. Ah! <laughs> we could have just come in and attached with a ring here and here, and then there and there, and had just a second layer of Celtic knotwork. But I think this will be good for what it is. And also, just because it looked good on this size sphere does not mean it would necessarily work for our ornament. So let's go ahead and test fit before we get too far ahead of ourselves. And I do think that that looks adorable. Let's go ahead and get the second and third layers of chain added. And then we may do a fourth and fifth from the tip, but we'll see. I'm removing this from there. Putting it back on. And now, so this was, what was that? An inch and a quarter? So maybe we can try inch and a quarter. Maybe two and a half might be too much of a difference. Let's like let's try two and a quarter. No, nope, let's add in another little bit. Yeah, I think that's gonna be I don't know, two and a quarter. You know two and a quarter will be really good because we still have to factor in the size of the link that we're adding. I've gotta have a more reasonable ruler. I do not. Okay. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so yeah. 
coming in at two and a quarter. And so there is one. Two and three. I'm going to get these attached in the same exact manner and then hopefully find more of this chain because I'm, I'm burning through it pretty quick. Um, I'll meet you back here when we start measuring the third row. Okay, so this is actually coming along really nicely. I'm loving the um, length, so I'm going to try three and a quarter for our third chain, just to keep that same kind of incremental growth. And I think that'll be nice. So, and I actually, y'all be so proud. <laughs> I got a ruler. <laughs> I went and scrunched it and stole it from my Randy. So, uh, he'll be fine though. He's still got another ruler over there. So I'm just gonna line it up and snip. And then come over here. Ooh. And I've run out of chain, so I'm just going to snip that off, and then I've got the entire spool. Unfortunately, it does not have the item number on it, but this is the bulk spools that I get from the Ring Lord, and I really like them, but that's just me. Okay, measuring off three and a quarter inches, which uh, the measurement really isn't super important, because if you're working with a different sized um, ornament, then you'll want to scale, you know, your wire and your dimensions and distribution of everything to suit your ornament. Um, but again, the, kind of just figuring it out, being consistent about, um, you know, the growth, how I stuck to, you know, we grew by an inch each time. So if I were doing this for like, a huge ornament or something like something like a foot across I might you know make it be three inches per row and just stick to that consistency whoops all right let's get resettled up okay so we're back on our main sphere um I think I lost there it is and just doing the same thing repeating the same technique because I think on this one I might be happy to just do um the three layers of chain. I feel like there's enough other stuff going on and I really like the spacing and distribution, but you do you. You do your ornament the way you like. And then I'm just going to find the tip of the chain, not too worried about getting any twists or anything in it. And then just closing that. And again, things are sitting kind of weird because it's on a different sized sphere. But we'll see how it goes. I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking about using you, these guys as the charms off the tips because I only have like five of them. So this way I'd be able to do that and then. Um, I don't know, make myself a pair of earrings or something. I really like that charm. So, but you could use, um, ooh, some little, like, rainbow casting prism, uh, briolets or briolette or whatever faceted teardrops. Um, like, just anything. Anything sparkly or pretty, or you could do feathers, or you could do a rock that you found, like... I mean, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. You could do more Mobius flowers. That'd be really cute. Yeah, that'd be super cute. To do just little Mobius flowers hanging down there. Okay, last one, you guys. I'm so excited to see how this looks. When it's all done and hanging on the tree. And so, and I could have used just more of the same um, aluminum jump rings, but I kind of like the way these oval rings set sit on the uh, on the charm. 
I like it. I think it looks kind of sleek. Okay, one more ring. Yeah, it's <laughs> for as much as I weave chainmail, I'm not actually a um and not that we're weaving any, you know, actual chainmail here. Um other than like maybe the Mobius flowers, but really that's three rings. But uh I'm not a patient person. I just thrive on instant gratification. And with chain mail or with projects like this, where it's like, woo, one more ring. Woo, one more ring. <laughs> Every single ring is a small victory. Y'all, this is adorable. Okay, let's get funky. And we could use... I'm thinking about... I think I'm just going to use the one. Yeah. Normally I like to double up and do two thinner rings, but I'm just going to do one 18 gauge, one eighth inch. If I were using two rings, I'd have used 20 gauge, one eighth inch in stainless steel instead of aluminum. But at least for test fitting, I'm just doing the, alu the single aluminum ring. That way we can try it on our bobble or our ornament. And see how that looks. There we go. Yee, I love it. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how it looks. Getting all the chains out of the way. Just putting the top of the ornament through. And then we can kind of poke it. Untangle any of the chain untangle our charms oh my gosh okay let's go check it out on the tree y'all okay y'all so this is how it's looking and i have to say i absolutely love it oh my gosh <laughs> i think this might be one of my favorites so far if you guys have any questions comments or ideas please leave them down below if you'd like to see more ornament videos like this just holler at me and we'll see what we can do and um if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as participate in all sorts of behind the scenes content, um, our after parties on our Friday live streams, digital download stuff, booty boxes, all the different things that we have going on here at Back to Earth Creations, please check out our Happy Crafter Club. Links for everything are down in the video description below. And it starts at just a dollar a month, it, which really goes, I mean, it might not sound like a much to y'all, but it makes our world go round. So thank you guys so much for all of your support. And um, I'm going to get some hopefully super cool slow motion video of this spinning. And then I'll see y'all in our next video. So until then, you guys, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>